everything, everything we've concentrated on so far has been medical data. I'm going to talk to you about something very, very different. I'm a little uncomfortable, I'm not uncomfortable talking about it, but I'm a little uncomfortable talking it to the audience because what's going to happen, we're going to start having more and more of these talks, and unfortunately, I'm the one who has to give it, and it's about cost. Uh, 2013, things are changing, and I'll tell you why. This is my disclosure slide. None of these uh, have any impact on my, my talk. The problem, you know what it is. Uh, 10 to 15 percent of the patients are going to have common bile duct stones. There's many ways you can treat these stones. I'm going to go fast, and I'm going to really stop on just a few slides. Pre-op, intra-op, post-op, or procedurally, percutaneous transpatic cholangia catheterization and management of stones is a nice way in some patients with no operation at all. Selected preoperative ERCP, these are the endoscopic strategies, or postoperative ERCP or intraoperative ERCP. I'm going to show you data um, that a selective preoperative ERCP is only cost effective if you can determine that there's an 80%, greater than 80% probability that you have a common bile duct stone. Otherwise, all of the data I show you is going to show that postoperative ERCP is a cheaper way to manage common duct stones. But as Ray Ander said, the cheapest way to manage common duct stones is laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. Operative strategies we briefly touched on. The other strategies, there's a question in the panel about what do we do about lasers. Um, the homium YAG laser I used for a number of years, actually, uh, both in the operating room percutaneously and through doing ERCP. Um, I threw it in the trash about two years ago. The, if you got an electrohydraulic lithotriptor, it's way better, works a lot faster. Um, if you don't have one, get one. You'll like it. And then we talked briefly about laparoscopic cyst transcaster ERCP. But we're going to talk about, we're not going to talk about effectiveness, technical complexity, or experience. We're going to talk about cost. This is, the, this is the equation. Everybody's got to know this equation. This is the equation that's going to drive our lives for, I'm going to guess, the rest of my career. So I'm going to say the next 50 years. Um, value is going to be quality over cost. It's, it's, no, it's not going to be as much about how the patient does or how you feel your practice is, what you like to do, what the data shows, um, what you've done in the past. But I think increasingly hospital administrators are going to look at this equation. They're going to try to drive up the quality and they're going to try to drive down the cost. And that's what we're going to talk about. Everybody here on the panel I know is talking about high quality health care but we're going to have to drive down the cost. A couple of surveys I want to briefly touch on. This is a, a survey in Germany. Surgeons preferred postoperative ERCP because the incidence of common bile duct exploration in the 90s fell by 50 percent. This is a surgeon experience in the uh, annals of surgery. They uh, polled 2,434 general surgeons. The mean number of common bile duct explorations per year was two. So the surgeon experience is unlikely to support a laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. And, and Ray is absolutely right. It's the cheapest way to do it. It's the best way to do it. It has the lowest morbidity. The problem is that people aren't trained to do it. So the reality is what you're going to start looking at is when do you do ERCP to get out common duct stones or whether or not you do it operatively. So this is a... a, a, a Decision analysis basically looked at laparoscopic common bile duct exploration versus postoperative ERCP, estimating a couple of probabilities but looking at some cost numbers. It is a number of slides, and I'll just get to, to one point. Um, they looked at comparing preoperative ERCP, laparoscopic coli with IOC, and a laparoscopic common bile duct expiration, uh, lap coli with IOC and a postoperative ERCP, and then laparoscopic cholecystectomy alone. My numbers are going to focus on these two. This is the decision analysis. Um, I'm not going to waste your time looking at it. And these are some of the assumed probabilities for laparoscopic common bile duct expiration, assuming these sensitivities and specificities and success rates, bile, uh, bile leak rates as well. Um, and these are the assumed probabilities for ERCP. But these are, these are some of the numbers here. These are the base case cost assumptions that they use to rate their numbers. But I'm going to get to the conclusions in the interest of time because I want everybody to be able to have their questions answered. Um, Postoperative ERCP, just a little bit more expensive when you looked at the incremental cost. 
relative to a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. But a routine preoperative ERCP, almost three times the cost. Um, laparoscopic common bile duct exploration in this study was the cheapest way, the most cost-effective way to manage common bile duct stones. Postoperative ERCP was very, very close, a little bit more expensive, but preoperative ERCP. So what's, what does this kind of data suggest? I've got some more data to support that. It suggests that your hospital administrator, when you go and you got a patient who comes in who's maybe a little bit yellow or has an abnormal ultrasound, is going to say, and you want to get, a, you want to get an ERCP, you want to clear the duct before you take their gallbladder out, they're going to say no. Go ahead and take their gallbladder out and deal with it some other way. With this study, cost effectiveness, what I alluded to in that original slide, it was not until your prevalence of common duct stones reaches about 80% that your preoperative ERCP has any cost effectiveness. That, hopefully that'll make sense. But this is, your pre -op this is where the postoperative ERCP lines cross. Um, so what's the conclusion of this study anyway? Laparoscopic common duct exploration is most cost effective. Selective postoperative ERCP is the most co cost effective management strategy if expertise in laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is unavailable, which is very often the case. And only if uh, uh, preoperative BRCP only if you're pretty darn sure you're going to have common bile duct stones. This is a study I did some years ago, and I'm just going to summarize the results for you here. Um, preoperative BRCP was by far the most the most costly. It was it was much more costly than intra or postoperative management of common bile duct stones, whether they were managed open or laparoscopically. Again, this confirmed what, what Ray had talked about earlier. Laparoscopic management of common bile duct stones is the most cost effective way. Inter or postoperative ERCP are the most cost effective uh, management tool when skills or instruments to perform a laparoscopic common bile duct exploration are not available. Um, and this is, this is just brief numbers here. Preoperative ERCP, look at the total cost and the variable cost. 17, this, is only, this is the only thing that reached significance, $17,000. Because I'll tell you what happens. You get a preoperative ERCP, they don't feel up to a lap coli the next day. They end up staying a couple of extra days in the hospital, and the, and the bill just keeps going up and up and up. Versus a postoperative ERCP, variable cost, total cost, um, much less costly. Cheapest way to do it is interoperative laparoscopic management of common bile duct stones. So uh, 2011, here's a study. They looked at five treatment out, uh, strategies. Lap coli and expectant management, preoperative ERCP, coli with IOC, uh, plus or minus common duct, and then uh, lap coli without IOC and a post with uh, a postoperative ERCP. And they found in this study, most cost effective treatment strategies, laparoscopic cholecystectomy with routine IOC, and if positive for stones, postoperative ERCP. I don't know what the practice is out there. I know it is Ohio State. Everybody wants to get their common duct cleared before they go to the operating room. I can't tell you how many preoperative ERCPs. And, you know, sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. Depends, obviously, on the referring physician. Um, but uh, I think it's, a, it's safe to say from a cost perspective, selective use of postoperative ERCP. If you're worried, get an IOC in the operating room. There's going to be a lot of patients who don't need an ERCP. Most cost-effective uh, treatment strategy is intraoperative ERCP. Uh, with uh, sphincterotomy and stone extraction, and that's in a, a study in 2012 in the uh, Applied uh, Health Economics Health Policy uh, Journal. Um, I think this is, I wanted to mention this just in, in interest of full disclosure, but I don't think it's very realistic for most of us as surgeons to get an intraoperative ERCP. Most people, the gastroenterologist is not available to come into the operating room and get the stone out. So what's really done? This is what I think is really done. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing some of the audience comments. Um, if there's any concern for a common duct stone, they get a preoperative ERCP with an attempt to clear the common bile duct. And then they get an open or laparoscopic common bile duct expiration with a T-tube if stones remain at cholecystectomy. And that experience in performing those procedures is variable, plus or minus the postoperative ERCP. But what do I think should be done? This is the algorithm I, I like to use, and I certainly like to quote, and I think it's supported by the literature, ERCP and clearance for known common bile duct stones. If I know, I see one on the MRCP, I see one on ultrasound, I'm confident there's a common bile duct stone. Otherwise, I just help it go ahead and get a lab coli, shoot an IOC. If 
they don't know how to do an advanced technique, an advanced uh, or a, a laparoscopic common bile duct expiration, leave it in. Just leave the stone in, I'll get it, I'll get it post-op. Um, but an attempt to learn in the event of an unsuspected common bile duct stone is found as a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Attempts at duct clearance, at a minimum you need to get an IOC if you're, you're sus suspect. Um, but I, I'm a big advocate of post-operative ERCP from a purely a cost standpoint than routine pre-operative ERCP. Okay, I thank you for your attention.